Spoiled girls are on a whole different level of entitled. They think they're invincible and that their parents will always swoop in to save the day. But what's it like when they finally get a reality check, realize their parents can't just bend the law and that there's no easy way out? Here are five times when entitled girls think they can't be arrested. Number five, entitled tenant refuses to leave leasing office. Isn't it common sense that when you're asked to leave private property, you simply go? After all, it's not your property and the owners have every right to decide who stays and who goes. However, there's one woman who just doesn't seem to grasp this. Let's get started with our first case on the list, shall we? A body cam video from April 7, 2023 in Florida captures a tense encounter between police officers and a woman at an apartment complex. Officers Gory and Servitor, responding to a call about two intoxicated individuals asleep by the pool, find themselves dealing with a woman who refuses to leave the leasing office despite being asked repeatedly by both management and the police. I'm in here. So do you I live here. But you don't live here. You live in an apartment. That's so my suggestion fine. would be for you to go to your apartment. Okay. The woman, evidently under the influence, insists she's there to collect her mail. Why would you arrest me for asking for my mail? Be because they don't want you in here. This is private Why? property. It's their property. It's not yours. I'm just asking for mail. I'm asking you to leave. Her speech is slurred, her behavior erratic, and she seems unable to grasp the seriousness of the situation. The officers warn her that if she doesn't leave, she'll be arrested for trespassing on private property. Do you really want to go to jail for no, this? Of then not. leave. I, I'm asking. I can't beg so you. So I can't come to my leasing office for mail. Not right now. Not till you sober not up. Not right now. They've even patiently explained that she can come back when she's sober to get her mail. But it's just not sinking in. And sleep. Come tomorrow morning. Yeah. Sure. Different story. Yeah. Why? When you sober up. You're not drunk. She's been asked to leave seven times, and the officers make it clear there won't be an eighth request. That's seven times I've asked, right? There will not be an eighth. Why not? Because Why not? I'm going to put you in jail. Do you understand what we're saying? They don't want you here because you're drunk. You need to leave. <laughs> Yikes. She better not be waiting for that eighth ask, should she? Despite this, the woman keeps arguing and won't cooperate. She even requests a written charge, but the officers tell her it doesn't work that way outside of school. Reason. Okay, can I get a written version no, of no, that? No, no. Why not? Because this, this is not school. I don't give you a written version. Excuse me? As things get more intense, the police decide to arrest her for not leaving the property after multiple requests. I ain't got time for this. You guys want to press charges? You want to press charges? I, I, okay, these are your options. Isn't it frustrating to see someone push it this far? The officers gave her plenty of chances to just walk away. While they're making the arrest, another person, who turns out to be the woman's brother and also clearly intoxicated, is told to leave the premises to prevent any more trouble. Uh, no, she's going to jail, okay? No, I don't. Yeah. yeah. I don't necessarily. Move, move. No, 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 no. Move. No, no, no. As they put the woman into the patrol car, her frustration skyrockets, and she goes full-on wild, pounding on the door and letting out a furious scream. What the f doing? Stay in here. No! What are you Quit. arresting You're me for? You're fixing to go to what jail for right away. For what? Because I asked you to leave and the Now you see that her true colors are showing here. In the beginning, we might have thought she was just a drunk but soft-spoken girl. And now we see she's really a powder keg of emotions, ready to explode at any moment. Another person with her steps in and offers an apology to the officer for her friend's behavior. I'm sorry for that. That's okay. It's wrong. I yeah. Can't. I know she's wrong. But I asked her to leave eight times. Leave the office. She would not leave the office. The police make it clear they can't do anything for their friend at this point. Meanwhile, the woman remains vocal and uncooperative insisting she's being treated unfairly and mentioning personal problems. She repeatedly requests her slipper, which he seems to have lost during the encounter. Seriously, what's the deal with obsessing over that slipper? Is she power tripping or what? 
Inside the cop car, still pretty mad, the woman throws a curveball and asks the police what they'd do if it were their own daughter. Your daughter? I think my daughter would probably leave if the police no, asked her. No, no, I wouldn't. I think your daughter would be much too smart. I think your daughter uh, would never do That's a bold move. But was she hoping to dodge the arrest with that question? Well, it seems the officer's not taking the bait. Nice try, though. The officer's partner checks in, wondering if the suspect is still causing a ruckus and if the officer needs some backup. Is she still wiling out in there? Oh, yeah. You want me to follow you to jail? Yeah, if you want, you can. Well, with that girl going all wild, it's no surprise the officer thought he might need some extra hands. The video wraps up with the police having a chat with the apartment management. That's like, how many times did you ask her to leave? Several. How many times did I ask her to leave? At least eight. seven or eight? Eight. Who expressed their thanks for how the situation was handled. It's good to see everyone on the same page. As for the woman, well, she doesn't exactly have a happy ending to her day. She ends up getting taken to jail and slapped with a charge of trespassing on the property after being warned. It's safe to say her day took a turn for the worse. Number 4. Sister Caught in a Late Night Drama Well, well, well. In this next case, we've got another one of those entitled individuals who seem to have a knack for turning tiny issues into major problems. It's like they enjoy making mountains out of molehills. This girl? Well, she pretty much talked herself straight into an arrest. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Check out this police encounter featuring a group of people, including a pair of sisters, engaged in a loud argument following a noise complaint. The incident occurred in the early hours of the morning. The initial situation is tense. People arrive at the scene due to a noise complaint and find the sisters engaged in a heated argument. One sister plans to leave via Uber, and the officers confirm that there will be no further disturbances. However, the calm is short-lived. The situation quickly spirals out of control. One of the sisters becomes increasingly agitated, raising her voice and disregarding the police's requests to calm down. Don't Go tell stand me over what here. I do. Don't tell me, sir, yes, don't I'm tell telling you what, to what do. I do. Because right now sir, I'm telling you what to sir, do. Sir, I'm not locked up and I'm not doing nothing illegal. Don't tell you me are what doing to do. No, what I'm doing. You what are, I'm doing. You are being disorderly. Her behavior isn't just disruptive, it's also disrespectful. Challenging the officers at 4 a.m. and displaying signs of intoxication. I'm not being illegal. This this, same this man that's no, baby, no, I'm not. All right, well, let's come stand by this car. Well, then sit down. No. Even when the police politely ask her to sit down, she refuses to comply. Sit right here. I don't have to sit down. This is my oh, wife, baby. This is my wife. Right. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, you it is. You cannot yell at 4 o'clock in the morning. Okay, baby. Okay, you I don't have to raise. Okay, I don't have to raise at 4 o'clock. To make matters worse, she threatens the officer and claims she'll call for backup, though the officer doesn't seem at all threatened. I tell him what to do. I can call right now. Oh, hold on. Bring your voice down. I'm going to call. Uh, otherwise, call me. Bring call your voice right down. Now, baby. Maybe call in case you want to keep telling me what you Go for do. it. Okay. Call whoever you want to call. And when the tactic fails, she whips out her phone and starts recording, warning the police officer that she's documenting everything. That's funny. Keep that and I will record. That's funny. And I'm going to record. And I'm recording you. Sorry, but yes, the officer is recording too. He's two steps ahead. Despite the officer's composed and calm demeanor, the woman continues her defiant and argumentative stance. You need to relax. You need I don't need to record baby nothing because this is my oldest sister. And they, they called pressing target and they was already drinking. I don't need to they're not, no. they're not pressing hey, targets. Okay, but look. In a bid to keep things under control, the police give her a heads up about the possibility of getting arrested for disorderly conduct. Jail for disorderly conduct. Okay, disorderly conduct, but what am I doing? You're yelling you're, at you're, four in the morning. It's four in the morning and you're it drunk. Yes, there, drunk. yes, it does matter. Well, okay, wait, okay, call the test. However, the girl's response is pure refusal to cooperate. She insists on a sobriety test, which the officers decline, and keeps on raising her voice, only making the situation even more tense. Make me walk and do everything I don't else. Have to. It's okay, because, it's okay. It doesn't matter. Up. It doesn't matter. Yep. You call you caught up a response that doesn't matter. It does and I'm Well, it's not just the officer who's getting a taste of this girl's irrational behavior. Her sisters are chiming in too. And they're pretty much on the same page about her being completely out of line. Yeah, that's what she's trying to do. Not let her stress you out. I don't give a Like, why are you talking to the officers like they came out to save you? Oh god. But you know what they say, some people like to dance to their own tune. 
and this girl is no exception. She's still not budging an inch when it comes to following the officer's instructions. Okay, then don't talk to me. Stop yelling. Do not talk to me. Do not talk to Stop me. Stop yelling. Do not talk to me because I'm not yelling. Do not talk to me. You are yelling. Do not and talk to me. And you're extremely intoxicated. No, I'm not. She just keeps on talking, drawing out the situation, and unsurprisingly, her sisters have had their fill of her attitude. Literally, you're not giving me. Yeah. yeah. She's doing the opposite of getting things accomplished. She, girl, she, don't, she just told him, sir, I'm not screaming. She's still <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Before proceeding with her arrest, the officer takes a moment to call the girl's mom to inform her about the situation. Yeah, your daughter is about to go to jail for disorderly conduct. Okay, well, when she goes to jail, never anything. I ain't coming to bond. Nobody can fuck out. I ain't got no bond money, no stuff, no time. Displaying utmost respect in handling the matter. Surprisingly, despite being informed of her impending arrest, the girl just keeps going, unrelenting in her chatter. She even takes the opportunity to confront her sisters about money that they might owe her. Girl, make sure you have my money. Make sure you have my money. And it's on God. Make sure you have my money. Make sure you have my money. All right. Talk about relentless, right? Despite repeated clear warnings and multiple requests to de-escalate, the sister's actions ultimately lead to her arrest for disorderly conduct. On the jail for what? Yeah, disorderly conduct. For disorderly conduct. Don't make sure you, at me. I, I'm not swinging at you. Make sure you have my phone. Make sure you have my phone. Make sure you have my phone. Yeah, make sure you have my phone. However, the arrest is far from smooth sailing. She puts up a strong resistance, resulting in a physical struggle with the officers. To your uh, car! Stop. I'm walking to your car! Don't set me up! Don't set me up! Stop. Why won't you hold? You going to jail! You going to As the sister persists in her resistance, the police warn her of potential additional charges, including obstruction and interference with government property. We have warrants for obstruction? Well, we're going to get her for interference with government property here in a second if she keeps going. Her demands only intensify as she insists on calling a lawyer and requesting an ambulance, all the while continuing to verbally abuse the officers. You need to let me call a lawyer because what you're doing is against my rights. It's a series of escalating confrontations that could have been avoided with cooperation. The video concludes with the sister being taken into custody, still resisting and shouting. Eventually, she slapped with a hefty charge, one count of felony obstruction and one count of disorderly conduct. It's a sobering conclusion to a chaotic encounter. Ah, uh, these girls, going to great lengths to have it their way, only to end up with the opposite. What's the point of all that resistance and struggle, you wonder? Is it pride, or just a touch of plain old stubbornness? Well, I suppose we'll have to catch up with them in jail for the full story. Number 3. From Nail Tragedy to DUI Arrest This girl finds herself in a web of troubles. Suspected DUI, vehicle damage, and even physical assault. But strangely enough, her top concern isn't any of these serious matters. No, she's fixated on something seemingly trivial, her broken fingernail. It's astonishing how she's willing to overlook everything else, including her impending arrest, as long as she can retrieve her precious fingernail. Think I'm joking? Just watch this crazy situation play out. The initial complaint is straightforward, yet unusual. A man reports that a girl, who is now inside a nearby establishment, hit his car with her keys after a confrontation about her grazing his car door. It's a scenario that seems to escalate from a minor parking lot mishap to a heated exchange. Officer Santiago arrives, embodying professionalism and calm. He first speaks with the man who's made the complaint, gathering his side of the story. And she started to uh, swing at me. Okay. And when she came over, she did this to my car. Uh, with what, like, Cry with her keys? Then he approaches the girl inside the establishment, who's at the center of this unfolding drama. Hi, Officer Santiago, I thought yeah. you now have a camera this on. This man. All right, what this happened? Man, this man rips my finger. Okay. The girl's version of events adds layers to the story. She says she didn't do anything and continues to complain about her broken nail. I didn't do anything. I don't know. Okay. Right. Yes, right. I'm drunk, but it's like my I have no finger in it. Officer Santiago is doing his best to make things clear, but she's resolute in her denial, 
insisting she didn't hit his car. Anything. I don't know. Okay. All right. Yes, All right. I'm drunk, but it's like my... I have no fingernail. Okay. She throws a few curveballs, saying there's no motive for her to damage his car. And so why would I hit him for no reason? All right, why did, would did I you hit see what him? happened? Honestly, I did not. Okay. All right. I feel like... And accuses the man of making threats. I got a little too close to his car, but I didn't hit his car. He started getting out, freaking the f*** out of me, telling me he's like gonna hit me. She owns up to pulling into the parking lot too close to the man's car, leading to the confrontation. I was too short, but it's like, I didn't hit his car. Alright, and and when when did you pull in a Wawa? I don't know the exact... She also confesses to having consumed alcohol before arriving, a crucial piece of information that shifts the nature of the incident. I didn't consume alcohol in Walla, but I did consume my alcohol before, and I'm yeah. 21 years old. With her admission of alcohol consumption, Officer Santiago decides to put her through a series of sobriety tests. Watching these tests unfold is almost painful. The girl struggles through them, her coordination and comprehension clearly impaired. She attempts to recite the alphabet from C to Y, but fumbles, interchanging some letters and failing to stop at Y. K L M N O P Q R S T U V H Y W X N Z. Counting backward seems equally challenging for her. 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 41, 43, 39, 38. Okay. Her physical coordination tests, including the eye test. I mean, you want in New Jersey. I'm sorry. No, 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 you're fine. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm gonna go, go over to, right, I'm gonna go over to the right, just, just one. Walk and turn test. And one leg stand test. Two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand, six one thousand, seven one thousand, eight one thousand. Only further indicate her intoxication. Throughout these tests, her concern for her broken fingernail is evident, overshadowing the seriousness of the situation. <laughs> yeah. So we're, no so we're, 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 we're gonna have someone at the station take, take, take care of that, okay? No, it's not. I don't even want to be taking care. Of. I just okay. like... The assessment of her intoxication is undeniable. With the failed sobriety tests and her straightforward admission, the police have no choice but to arrest her for DUI. Do I do have to place, place you under arrest for driving while intoxicated? It's a traffic ticket. It's okay. not a crime, okay? Am I going to jail? You're not going to jail. You're going to a police station. All right. Officer Santiago, staying calm and collected, reassures her that it's more like a traffic ticket, not a serious criminal offense. He lets her know she's off to the police station, not jail. As she's handcuffed and escorted to the police vehicle, the officers take care to ensure her safety and comfort, given her injured finger. The girl, still seemingly more concerned about her fingernail than the DUI arrest, asks for a napkin. For her My finger. Please enough, can you please enough? The rescue's gonna come and swear. Here, here, just over here. Here, watch it. I got a Right until the very end, with cuffs securely on her wrists and a pending DUI charge hanging over her, it's astounding that her biggest concern remains that broken fingernail. The video also mentions that the police will continue to investigate the assault claim made by the man. This indicates that the incident is more complex than just a DUI arrest. Throughout the whole ordeal, the police handle the situation with a level of professionalism that's commendable. They conduct standard sobriety tests, explain each step to the girl, and show concern for her well-being. The calm and methodical management of the situation by the police ensures that all aspects of the incident, including the initial car confrontation, are thoroughly investigated. The video wraps up with the girl getting arrested for DUI. But let's be real here. She's probably still hung up on that broken fingernail, and it won't come as a surprise if she's still complaining about it even after she's been bailed out. Number 2. Intoxicated Drama Queen Just when you thought we'd seen it all, here's a new drama queen who takes the spotlight and outshines the previous cases we've witnessed. This woman, who's clearly the suspect from the outset, manages to play the victim throughout the entire ordeal while displaying utterly erratic behavior. 
Watch as she discovers the hard way that she can't control everyone around her. The incident begins with a store owner explaining how this drunk woman caused a scene in her store. She was walking to the car and everything. They got into a dispute. She grabbed a hold of his neck and started choking him, pushing him up against the wall and everything. Him? Yeah, his shirt's all torn up. The woman, on the other hand, presents her side of the story, claiming she came to the store with a lot of money to buy beer, but the owner refused to sell it to her. He came in here with a lot of money. Okay. Okay, he will not let me buy. I tried to buy a pack of uh, beer. Won't let me buy that. I come back with one twisted tea. She's clearly not happy about it expressing her frustration because the owner won't let her buy alcohol even though she's waving her money around. I would like to take a breathalyzer and be allowed to buy my beer or use some of my money that I'm not leaving with. Right, I need to so check my car all, how much I have some of it. All, got I got some of it. It's pretty evident that this woman is not in her right state of mind. Her speech and actions make it clear that she's under the influence of something, whether it's alcohol or something else. She goes as far as telling the officer she's being robbed without any evidence to support her claim. Um, no, I'm going by my money because they're robbing You're me, not bro. Going in the I car. think I lost it this time. Oh, You're f not that, going in dude. The car. I know where the f I am. I know. You're not okay. going to tell me that. She's so convinced of it that she even wants to check her car for missing money, as if it's been stolen from her. I'll fuck it. You're not going in the car. I need to check how much money you have. In the car. Yeah. Okay, you need to check? No. no. Exactly. Actually, don't touch my car. Her insistence that she's in her hometown and knows where she is adds to the confusion. Look, I'm in my hometown. I drink a lot here. I wake up right here. I would buy Gatorade every morning. When the officer asks if she's consumed any substances or alcohol, she firmly denies it. I'm on nothing. Nothing. Step back from me. I'm on please. nothing. I'm withdrawing I'm off my phone. medication because I can't make my fucking way back. But let's be honest. Her story doesn't quite add up. It's pretty evident that something's not right. However, it's worth considering that her erratic behavior might be linked to withdrawal from her anxiety medication. As the police try to calm her down and understand the situation, she becomes increasingly agitated and confrontational. I wanted to buy a beer. And I wanted to buy a twisted tea. That's it, bro. That's it. Look okay. at my car. Like, I've been through some shit, dude. If somebody's Car looks like that. She's placed under arrest, but the situation only escalates from there. A lot of money. Okay, please. Okay. You're no, you're not. Yeah, you can, you can go ahead. I don't have any. Thank you. Thank you. While being placed in the back of a police vehicle, she claims she can't breathe, is dehydrated, and needs her medication. I can't breathe in here, bro. I can't fucking breathe. Her distress intensifies as she demands air and her medication. Quite the drama queen, wouldn't you say? In a startling moment, she manages to remove her handcuffs and bangs them against the window. Hey, I got the handcuffs off you. Hey! Hey, 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 hey. Well, well, well. It seems she's not just a drama queen. She's also got some Houdini skills up her sleeve. How on earth did she manage to slip out of those handcuffs? The officers quickly returned to restrain her and put her back in cuffs. Here's your handcuffs. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. You cannot lie me in here and risk my life. I am on my medication. Please let me just breathe the air. Despite their attempts to reason with her, explaining that she's being detained for her actions and that they will provide air conditioning for her in the car, she continues to be defiant. Sir, you have to put the air on. That's all I'm asking for, sir. Sir, step yeah. in. Sir, you have step to, in the truck. You have to tell I'll me. Turn the I'll turn the air on. Put the air on, sir. Okay. I'll turn I, the air we'll on if you I, get I, in the we truck. Will I, turn I, the air I, on. The officer lays down the law, warning her about potential vandalism charges if she continues banging on the window. I mean, you bang I, on my window again? I didn't. I had to bang on your window because I cannot breathe. If Do you, you bang on my window that? again, you're getting a vandalism charge. I'll Do you take understand the vandalism that? charge. Move your foot. Later, our drama queen attempts to explain her beer purchase by claiming she was dehydrated. The officer, with a touch of humor, delivers a classic response. I'm dehydrated. That's why I was trying to buy some beer. Beer dehydrates you more. That's the wrong decision. But let's be real. Drinking beer to combat dehydration? That's like trying to put out a fire with gasoline. It just doesn't add up. The woman's demands become more desperate and varied. She's pleading for water and medication, and even insists on a trip to the hospital. 
very nicely for some water. My medication. If I can give you my keys, I think I got them in my pocket. I'm not going to give you medication. She's also adamant about her calling her lawyer and doctor. I don't even know what's going on. Yeah, I want to call my lawyer right now. Uh, you'll I'm not you'll have fight the opportunity. You, sir, but I need you, to call my lawyer. You'll have right the opportunity. Now. No, you have the opportunity. No, I'm not. No, That's I it. can't breathe. Just when you thought her drama couldn't get any more over the top, she says that she's been up for two days and is suffering from chapped lips, yet another sign of her severe dehydration. My lips are chapped. I'm dehydrated. Okay. I'm dehydrated. Okay. Can you see what I'm doing? I can. Here. I'm not even. Well, maybe if she had opted for water instead of beer, she wouldn't be in this sorry state, right? The video wraps up with a woman still detained in the police vehicle, persistently resisting and making a multitude of claims about her condition and treatment. After all the effort the police officers put into trying to reason with her, at one point, the officer just throws in the towel and stops engaging. Not what you said to me whenever you were resisting me. Because I'm trying to save my life, you know what that feels like? We're done with this conversation, thank you. Later on, she even questions why she's being detained seemingly oblivious to her actions, despite them being clearly explained to her numerous times. Sir, why am I still being detained? I'm dehydrated and you have told me nothing. Is this being recorded? Because it needs to be. Yes, yes, it's I very ho sure hope so. Okay. Well, the woman's antics in this case sure had some serious consequences. I mean, we're talking about theft, resisting a merchant, battery, and resisting law enforcement here. And as if that wasn't enough, She's now looking at a whole 30-day jail sentence. Besides acting entitled, resisting, and flirting, it's safe to say that being excessively dramatic and emotional doesn't exactly sway police officers. Let's just hope we don't discover what else won't work on them, yes? Number 1. Spoiled girl refuses to get out of father's car. At the top of our list is an incident involving a woman being arrested for what's probably the most absurd reason someone could ever end up behind bars. And to make it even more mind-boggling, it's her own dad who pressed the charges. The very person she counted on to bail her out. Crazy stuff, right? In a remarkable display of entitlement and defiance, a young woman finds herself in a tense standoff with police officers over, guess what, her blatant refusal to leave her father's car. You're waiting on him to what? To get out of the building? To come drive the car? <laughs> Um, he just parked us here, so I don't know. Yeah, but you you know he doesn't have to drive you anywhere, but it's his car. Yes, you heard that right. It's a small thing that turned into a big deal. This incident, unfolding on September 18, 2022, captures a surreal scene where their daughter, who is supposed to be in rehab, adamantly refuses to exit the vehicle despite her father's clear wishes and the police's stern warnings. It's quite a scene. The father, evidently distressed, recounts to the officers how he had to pick up his daughter after she was kicked out of a rehab facility. He even gave her gift cards, considering she was jobless, and took her to get food. He just got me a gift she card. She was supposed to be in a rehab facility, but somehow managed to get kicked out of it and showed up back at the apartment. So I felt sorry for her, my mistake, gave her more money, gave her more things to do. However, she stubbornly refuses to leave his car. The daughter's behavior is erratic. She claims her father might be suffering from early dementia, a statement he firmly denies. Want to drive her home? No, oh, I do not. I think he might oh, be I having some sort of like, is... all, like early dementia or something, but he is yeah, not acting like himself. Can you believe it? She's not just ignoring her dad's requests. She's tossing in a crazy accusation just to avoid the situation. This girl's really pushing the limits. The police, trying to mediate the situation, explain to the daughter that she is trespassing and could face arrest if she doesn't comply. I'm not trying to live in this yeah, car, you know what I mean? So Yeah, but you're not trying to get out of this car. Correct, which right now you're breaking the law, but this is not your car. So you're trespassing. So I go on Ubers. She, however, remains unyielding, insisting on staying in the car and waiting for her father to drive her home. Um, you explained it to me, but I would like to shut my door now. I'm not doing that. It's not your door, it's not your car. Okay, I'll just ignore that then. Just get out, Alex. You're making a show. His up. door? What's really surprising is how she seems to downplay the whole situation. At one point, she casually asks the officers if they don't have anything better to do. Um, don't you guys have anything better to do today? We actually do. Yeah, like, so I don't know so what you guys are like to do. Why don't you guys so have to, I don't want to take we a ride to the jail. As things heat up, the daughter's behavior gets even more confrontational. 
She goes to the extent of telling the officers that her dad has a mental problem and isn't himself. I think there's a misunderstanding. I think something's going on with my dad because he's not acting like himself. No, he's acting pretty normal to no, me. No, I think he's acting like he's got a problem. Blue, blue, um, blue, blue, order registered to Jack. Despite the officer's explanations and her dad's determination to press charges, she still doesn't seem to grasp the seriousness of the situation and believes she's not causing any trouble. Your dad wants you out of the this car. This doesn't feel like um, a very real situation, like, and it doesn't feel like we're bothering anyone. So do you want to press charges for trespassing? I do. The officers make one more attempt to convey that going to jail for this would be utterly ridiculous. This is going to be one of those situations on, when you go down to the jail, people are like, what are you in for? And you say, because I wouldn't get out of the car. People are going to be like, that's a stupid reason to go to jail. But she remains unyielding. The police officers make it clear that if she doesn't leave the car voluntarily, they'll have to remove her by force. But the girl doesn't seem to care and tells them to keep their hands off the car since it's not their property. Please so stop touching me. this car because it's not your car. It's not yours either. Well, that's okay. Right, you're going to end up... No, you're gonna end up you up. are. Stop. Step on out. When they try to remove her from the car, she accuses them of assault and battery. I like to Don't press charges for assault, an well, assault charge. Assault. I just was assaulted. Was. Battery. So, I want to press charges for battery. Okay. Don't I want to press charges. It's lawful. The officers, maintaining their professionalism, continue to warn her about the potential consequences of her actions, including arrest for trespassing and resistance. They make it clear that she has two choices. Either she gets out of the car and leaves without facing any charges, or they take her with them to the station. So. These are the options. You can get out of the car, you can leave on your own accord, you can walk away, or you're going to end up going with us. She demands legal intervention, asking for a judge or jury, seemingly oblivious to the fact that she's in the wrong. Get a judge or something. Like, I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. Get a judge and a jury and take me to trial. Like, I don't really understand. So Mail me some papers. I mean, I don't know. Again, the cops remind her it's not her car and her response is just mind-boggling. This isn't your car. Is that your street? It's part of the city. Is that your pavement? It's the city's. Or is just that your stone? They make one last friendly attempt, asking her nicely to get out, or they might have to use force. So I really would like you to get out of the car so that we don't have to force you to get out of the car, or that force doesn't have to be used. And no surprise, the girl stands her ground, not even budging a bit. The standoff reaches a climax when the police finally arrest the daughter for trespassing and resistance. Um, you're interrupting me. What are you doing? No, I'm not going to do why. Put your hands behind your back. No. You're under arrest. No. Her resistance and accusations against the police officers continue as they take her into custody. At one point, she calls out to her dad for help while a lady officer conducts a pat-down, but her dad declines. Please help me! Please help me! Stop. Later on, the father steps in, apologizes for his daughter's behavior, and suggests that she might be under the influence. The officers discuss that she will also face charges for resisting a police officer. I'm sorry. I, she may be under the influence. I'm so sorry. Okay. Did you two? Yes. Oh, so we're going to charge the resisting. Okay. The video ends with her in police custody continuing to resist and making various demands and accusations. Just think about it. Everything would have been so different if she had just gotten out of the car, right? None of this would have spiraled so out of control if she hadn't kept resisting and being stubborn. But I guess, from all the other cases we've seen today, it seems like spoiled girls struggle to grasp things when they don't get their way. And there you have it. A face-off between entitled girls trying to cry and resist their way out of getting arrested. Which one left you shaking your head the most? I'm still baffled by the daughter who refuses to exit her father's car. Accusing him of being mentally unstable was quite a low blow. These suspects sure know how to keep us entertained with their antics, don't they? Also, check out her other stuff showing up on the screen right now. And I'll see you in the next video. See you next time.